lead us in the pledge. My pleasure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Who said Mrs. Cragen wasn't here? <laughs> The uh, mayor sends his apologies. He could not be here tonight, so I will be filling in. Uh, so there will be no chair report. Resource committee, uh, we met uh, Thursday afternoon, and uh, Mr. Jokola uh, just went over the budget briefly, which he will be making a presentation on uh, pretty soon. Uh, we uh, talked a lot about uh, the budget and how it involves with the buildings and the schools and uh, some of the problems that we're going through and looking at building a new school uh, and our enrollment, uh, which has continued to increase. Uh, Mrs. Cragen uh, brought up and we voted uh, from Resource Committee to uh, have an, another strategic uh, facilities committee would you like to expand on that Mrs. yeah Reagan? I would um, so boy going back a, a pretty long time we've always had a specific subcommittee um, or a task force devoted to our facilities and making sure that we stay on top of what is needed but also looking forward given that we we know that there's a larger population coming along and that we have a certain number of facilities um, we are forming a task force that will meet as we are able to and as needed to understand the, uh, what's in front of us and then take steps to recommend to the full school committee moving forward. So, thank you. Mr. Walsh, any? No, I think you both covered it. Okay, okay. thank well, you. I I, questions? questions. Yeah. So I guess what I would like to know, because I'm on that building needs subcommittee, but I don't, we have from what I understand, we haven't had a meeting in a while. And how would a facilities task force be different? Um, you know, that's, I guess, my question. I, I guess what we'll be looking for is uh, we will be having another uh, facilities committee a meeting pretty soon, but the, the strategic task force will include the facilities committee plus uh, administrators, uh, teachers, and community. Uh, representatives so we're so looking we're looking that be? yeah we're looking at the full picture of the city of all of our schools Pittsburgh High School is only 20 years old but uh, all of our other schools uh, Rheingold uh, was built in 1969 uh, this was built in 1967 and then you take uh, South Street goes uh, way back to the 40s and uh, Goodridge is probably 150 years old. Uh, so, so how would you recruit people for the task force? Well, we would work through the superintendent in, uh, to recruit people. And that would be community members as well? Com community members as well as uh, school committee, the facilities committee, and which would be you. Uh, right, so you, that's yeah. the building yeah. needs. Yeah, building needs, yeah. right. So it'll, but we want to expand it. Uh, to get city input because uh, as we move forward with the new Crocker Elementary School uh, that's being built, uh, there has, it, as a pre-K to eight, we have the potential of 1,400 students, which would be too, too big. So there's still many things taking place now. The feasibility study is not completed. Uh, there are ongoing meetings uh, with the Crocker uh, Building Needs Committee and uh, so that's Mr. Joe Clooney. Yeah, that, that, uh, excuse me, that pretty much captures it. Yeah. Um, so I think we we spoke about, um, or the resource subcommittee spoke about forming a task force uh, as we're starting to, I guess, really digest and discover how much our enrollment increase is going to impact us short term. And when I say short term, I mean next year primarily at the middle school level, uh, but the larger class sizes that we're seeing at the elementary level, how that's going to filter through the system over the next one, three, five 
eight years uh, and then ultimately to the high school. So that has an impact. And uh, I think really recently, uh, and recently being last week, we kind of confirmed um, you know, what our independent kind of our internal calculations had been with a, a third party, just a, a rough pass uh, that, in fact, our class sizes were increasing. And, you know, an enrollment study that was performed by NESDEC three years ago uh, as part of the Lamarro Pagano Strategic Facilities Plan, uh, it really, really didn't factor in, um, I guess I don't say current methodologies, but they had been using methodologies that were kind of more historical versus maybe more some that are real time. Um, so Can I what? Follow up about that because you um, said in the last few meetings that our enrollment has been flat and that it was projected to stay flat. So is it not flat? Well, I, I'll. I said our enrollment is flat from last year to this year. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what the enrollment will be, um, you know, one, three, five years out. But just from the class sizes that we're seeing in the elementary range, even starting at kindergarten, those class sizes are consistently larger than, say, what our middle school averages. And, you know, so even though we have some uh, kind of changes, whether it be from six to seven and then from eight to nine, you know, when people make cho choices, um, the class sizes are larger in that elementary now started this year with middle school and that's going to continue now for the next few years. Uh, Mr. Jokel, could you, um, what you presented to us at the uh, resource meeting the other night, could mm -hmm. you present at the uh, next uh, school mm -hmm. committee meeting? Mm -hmm. And it shows you just uh, the increases. Like in K to, K to 6, you have like over 400 students going into classes that are under 400 students mm -hmm. you know and that wave is continuing right and that's the uh powerpoint that um mary delai who's our business manager put together and i shared with you, you all by by email but there's you know i can try to provide some context to it but um again a lot of that's publicly available but it kind of helps set the uh the story of the budget and where the schools are now and really how they're projected to be over the next few years and when you, when you look at some of the projects that are ongoing in Fitchburg uh, that haven't been talked about too much, we know the woolen mill projects down on River Street, how, how they've increased our enrollment, but the old, uh, I call <coughs> it, uh, going back, tar box furniture, har Harpers, they're going to build 48 housing units there. The Iva Johnson mm -hmm. buildings on River Street are going to be made into retail and housing. Uh, None of that was, I don't think, was figured into the uh, Pagano and NESDEC uh, a few years ago. And, and I think, you know, another thing that was discussed at the subcommittee meeting last week was just, uh, you know, Fitchburg is, uh, is affordable for a lot of families. And we're experiencing families moving in from some of the Boston suburbs um, as well. So, and, you know, it's, it's a fraction of what, you know, some of the Boston suburbs cost. Uh, we'll go to policy. Well, actually, yep. so we're skipping school building, so could I just. Oh, oh okay. I'm, yeah, I thought. Okay. Mm -hmm. Could yeah. I request that we get a meeting soon? Because it mm -hmm. has been a while. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, one, one more thing on school buildings. Uh, uh, Mr. Jokler, could you update uh, people on the Crocker Elementary currently, grades three and four? Uh, well, I, I can. Um, the uh, Univents uh, are supposed to ship um, from the factory anytime between this Wednesday and next Tuesday. Um, so I, I say they should because uh, the manufacturer has, uh, they moved their manufacturing facilities, or they changed their plants, I should say. So that impacted their ship schedule. And uh, I guess pardon me for being a little bit reluctant to say when they will be here, but I've learned over the last six months that nothing happens on time. <laughs> so, um, you know, the goal, I guess the goal, um, you know, and 
would remain to have the third and fourth graders move back to Crocker this school year. Um, I just don't know if that's going to happen at this point. Okay. Questions? Okay. Uh, policy committee. Um, we had a, sorry, no, we had a meeting and then we had this meeting and now we have a meeting next Wednesday. Um, which has been posted and we have some housekeeping um, we're starting to uh, look at the policy book but starting from the back just to see what um, you know what what needs to be addressed uh, we had a couple of policies uh, uh, tabled the last time so we'll try to bring those around for the month of May but um, we'll be meeting Wednesday at 2 o'clock and the invitations gone out and uh, yeah and we've got a second reading tonight for the policies that um, uh, have to do with attendance. So, All right. student support. So we met last Thursday, um, and specifically, what we were wanting to discuss um, is just this issue that's come up a couple of times in student support about uh, vertical integration and maybe creating something um, and budgeting something that would. I guess more ensure a deliverable about what is actually is like reporting about what actually happens in terms of integration from elementary to middle to high school um, and then even perhaps grade to grade right within schools so um, there was a, a good discussion about that it's been a topic of conversation um, in you know with superintendent Jokola and the cabinet uh, there is an ever-growing list of requested budget items which makes this you know you know really important to find priorities and where you get really the most bang for your buck and because they're all engaging in the turnaround process or four of the schools are engaging in the turnaround process they're coming up with a lot of data um, and they're getting outside um, advice from groups about where you can best improve um, the school so I, I guess this is this has been an issue that's existed prior to any turnaround talk um, and we're just looking for a way to really ensure it there just seems to be too often um, they talked it was kind of an interesting theme where they talked about moving the district from this um, uh, district of schools to a well, how did you guys? Yeah, a district of schools to a school district. Yeah, to a school district where we are really all expecting certain non-negotiables at whatever age that might be or grade that might be, regardless of whether you're at Longjou or you're at uh, Memorial. Um, and so that's really kind of a culture shift that um, we spent some time talking about. And I think it's going in a good direction. There's certainly going to be a lot of change that results from these turnaround plans so we've talked a little bit more about that process and what's going on at those schools um, and the so anyway we're going to keep kind of following up with that I think as you put a budget plan together you know I know at student support will be looking to see who owns that piece there is talk about perhaps a teacher leader model in a stipended position something like that I personally, I think we've talked about this, personally think, you know, with English and math, we've got a lot of that covered with coaches, but when it comes to specials or when it comes to history or when it comes to other subjects, um, you can have a really different experience in this district. Um, so we'd like that not to be the case. We'd like it to be that everybody has a stellar experience in the district. Um, so. Then um, Aiden had talked about asking, getting some more um, feedback about the agreement with Pittsburgh State, and um, Superintendent Jokola talked about um, starting that conversation and, and starting to work out what the details of that agreement are going to look like. And we then talked a little bit about the use of the gyms and um, you know, what's happening for outside groups um, and their ability to kind of access our services so we asked for our next meeting to ask um, for some more details about any post-grad data that we collect um, just anecdotally we're just hearing about kids who start school but then 
drop out for whatever reason it might be or have difficulty getting back um, into college if they take a semester off and, and that seems to be an issue that we really want to follow up on. But Aiden, what else? Yeah, I mean, it was just an anecdote. So we had a couple yeah. kids that dropped out of college early, so we were, that spurred the inspiration to kind of get um, a deeper read on that and see what the, what the data shows if, you know, graduates from the district are, that sign up for four-year schools are graduating in four years or graduating period and, and the different kind of patterns that are surrounding that post-graduation from high school. We have a, uh, an updated policy on uh, use of our buildings. You do? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. We yes. have an updated. Yes. Yeah. That was updated last use, year. Particularly our gyms and. For rental, you mean? For rentals. Yes. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The, the whole thing that I was bringing up is if it's a nonprofit organization, and actually I have to follow up with you about that, but um, there was an AAU league in Fitchburg that was, the coach was paying a lot of money to keep it going, to keep it, and um, being a nonprofit, we were looking at different options to get into gyms, either in Fitchburg Public Schools or elsewhere. So that was just kind of a side note of that, of that okay. meeting. Okay, I think we have pretty good policy on nonprofits and not using our yeah. facilities. Yeah, so. I actually came in with a crutch. I didn't realize that it was a, a nonprofit organization. So, yeah. oh, okay, but it was a different conversation. I had I known that. Any more questions? Okay, no? okay. that's great. Uh, School personnel, the only thing I want to say in school personnel, we with the seven uh, unions that we have, all of those negotiations are completed, so we don't have to worry for another couple of years. <laughs> no, uh, the mayor's not here, no executive committee, a student report. So um, for our February meeting, we touched base on a new policy that our school had created, which was the headphone policy. Mm -hmm. So students going from one class to another, which was a five minute period, they can use um, one headphone, have it in their earbuds and listen to music, whatever they want for that five minute period before class starts. So we took um, these two months to kind of observe in the classroom and you know what we see, how students react to the whole policy and what they do in class. And we've noticed that it actually does help. Students have kind of limited the amount of times they look at their phone in class, which is really beneficial because that's the whole objective of the policy that we wanted that Mr. Ochedlino discussed and made. And I feel like, you know, we both agreed on how the policy did really make a difference on the students, mm -hmm. like phone pickups. And <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. And uh, quarter four started today. Um, so we'll get our quarter three report cards on Friday during advisory. And we made 91% attendance for last week. Pretty good. I heard that's a record. It probably is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's great. But you, you have a lot of things coming up in the next couple of months. Yeah. 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 Boy. It's, uh, particularly for the seniors, yeah. an awful lot. Any questions for our student reps? Okay, uh, we have a motion for the approval of the uh, March 18th meeting minutes. Make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, no need for an executive session. Communications, <coughs> Mr. Jokla? Um, the only communication I would have is that on uh, Thursday, the Crocker School Building Committee is meeting at 1 p.m. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we, can we do it? Jim? Do other communications at this time? Or at okay. Communications, yeah, yeah. all communications, okay. yeah. So, so uh, last meeting I, I announced that on uh, April 11th there is going to be an open mic for poetry reading, which is being sponsored by the Red Poet Society at the high school. Um, uh, Megan Normandin is coordinating it, and normally I wouldn't make that announcement twice, but tonight the reason I wanted to make it again, uh, Megan stopped by, and I'm going to try and pronounce the student's name correctly. Uh, she's class of, a person is class of 2022, Salama Troch or Troche. Trochi. So this is the um, post that she made talking about the event. And whether you know it or not, this is the logo from the historical society that she included on the poster here. Wow. Uh, has all the information on it. And as I said last week, if you come, you don't have to stand up in the mic and talk if you don't want to, but I think it'll be a fun evening. And I'm very impressed with the artwork of uh, this first year student at Fitchburg High, 
Uh, and uh, Megan was very proud to drop these off, and we've made multiple copies to post around the city as well. And that's the, I wanted to give her credit for the great work in helping promote the event that is basically being sponsored by the high school and high school students. Okay, thank you. Any further communications? Anything? Any, uh, anybody wish to speak uh, at this time? Oh, I've got a communication, oh. actually. So at the, um, when we have our second meeting of the month, I just want to remind all of our parents that uh, Be Positive Therapy Pets coordinates with Fitchburg Public Library the first Saturday of every month. And because of the work we do in the schools, we do a lot of reading work with students, students reading to pets. So please come to Fitchburg Library this coming, um, this coming Saturday, April, uh, April 6th, because we will also have growing places. We are going to have volunteers who will bring catnip and dirt and <laughs> containers. Uh, so we'll have therapy cats there and therapy dogs, possibly a therapy rabbit. And uh, flyers have gone home to different kids in, um, in their classes. I'll drop off some at Market Basket. It's been in the Sentinel. But this is really crucial. We have a child who has come from Rheingold every first Saturday. And when we go to his, school, his classroom at Rheingold every week, we have seen this one child who has been reading aloud to the therapy pets 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and his reading has gone way up. Like it's a much steeper, you know, much steeper increase. So we're really proud of this program. Um, we welcome anyone. We also have folks from the Arc of Opportunity. We have had seniors come. We have people who don't have a pet at home who just come. And it's, uh, it's something that brings um, all of us great joy and uh, the public as well. So many pets, many books, come on down. So you say I can come for therapy and listen? <laughs> <laughs> we would love to have you. We would have cats, dogs, you got it. Thank you, Ms. Craig. Uh, Mr. Jokla. Okay, you. thank you. Uh, so tonight we have uh, two uh, items under comment. the superintendent's report. Mm -hmm. Public comment. And oh, I'm sorry. Public comment. I, we started it and then we got interrupted. And then anybody for public comment tonight? Thank you. Okay, Mr. Jokula. Thank you, Aiden. Yeah. <laughs> so first, I'd like to just start off with the uh, dog license award winner. So oh, yeah. Sally Cragen. Uh, we have uh, Arabella Gomez, who's a student at Rheingold Elementary School. So you wanna <laughs> come yeah. up? Come up? So. So let me get all the swag. Okay, all the swag. <laughs> it's like the the post Oscars gift <laughs> bag, right? Yeah. It, you know what? I think the that even they, better. They should, even they better. Should, <laughs> yeah, this yeah. is way better. So, so this is Arabella Gomez, and I actually met her when she was a kindergartner with Mrs. Boutwell in Rheingold, and she was a wonderful artist then, and she's an even better artist now because she has won our contest. So let me show you her poster. Oh, oh wow great. it's really how about that that's what your poster oh, looks yes. like so yeah so Arabella um, and I should say that the design was done by Sam Squalia our, uh, who the president of Friends of Fitchburg Dogs and a Fitchburg City Councilor so we took your picture and then we put type so that people could really you know get the message and also we put in this box about people can get the licenses dog licenses need to be um, purchased this month so go to uh, the city clerk, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. This is going to be at City Hall. Your poster will be at City Hall. <laughs> and then we have some extras for you. And then we have some prizes for you. And here is her award. First prize, Arabella Gomez, Dog License Poster Awareness Contest. That is for you. All right. Yay. And we have a little button that says top dog. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and you can put that on there or wear it, whatever you like. But our final gift, we really want to encourage you as an artist. So here is a scrapbook. And there's a little picture of a dog, and you can put your own picture in if you like. But the first page has your poster. All right. Very cool. Yeah. So this is big. So you can put your, your best artworks in there. Yeah. <laughs> OK? And we're going to put your poster in every school not just Ryan Gold, not just your classroom. But I would like, um, can you tell everyone what inspired this dog? Were you thinking, because I know you have two dogs, can you tell everyone what the names of your dogs are? So my first dog, she, her name is Crystal, and then my second dog's name is, 
his dozer. And um, they uh, are, are, do either of them look like this? No. So this is, this is, a, this is an imaginative dog. My favorite thing animals to draw mostly are like horses, cats, and dogs. And can you tell us, I know you're at Rheingold and you're in the third grade, but what's the name of your teacher? Mrs. McDaniels, and we like to combine classes with Miss Waterhouse. Mm-hmm. Well, that's great. Well, we are so glad that you entered. And what do you, what do you want to tell everyone that they should? They should love your dog and license it. Yes. Great. Love your dog and license your dog. This is our second year doing this poster contest. And next year we're going to expand it. And you can enter next year too because we're going to have at least second through fourth graders and possibly first graders through fourth graders we're still discussing. Mm -hmm. So you are our second prize winner. Well done. Congratulations. <laughs> thank yeah. thank yeah. you. Yeah. And here is your goodie bags. Bob. Hey. And we yeah. need a picture. Yeah. Hold your poster. Oh, it's going to actually cover you. It really is beautiful. Okay, so let's. <laughs> hold on, and then Bob can hold that. So we'll make sure that we know that that award goes to Arabella. Yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> That's obvious. <laughs> Get another one with uh, Dad in the picture. Yeah, right. Okay, there you yeah. go. Yeah, Dad. Come on in, Lars. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. All right. Congratulations, everybody. On three, say, woof, woof. Woof, woof. There you go. All right. Good uh, job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's okay. So here yeah, you go. Oh, that's for your classroom. Keep them coming. Yeah. Yeah. Hold that portfolio. I can uh, picture Chad and he can do it. Okay, story. yeah, okay, you know? sounds good, yep. Okay, so to continue on our arts theme this evening, we have a little preview um, of the State Fair, which is running April 10th, 11th, and 12th. 11th, 12th, and 13th. 13th, excuse me, 11th, 12th, and 13th <laughs> yeah. uh, at Fitchburg High School. And uh, Tabitha, do you want to introduce the students? And sure. Say so tonight uh, I brought, I'll come over this way. So tonight I brought uh, Ciara Perry. Come on over here. Okay. Um, Ciara Perry is uh, our Emily Arden in the show. So as you know, I always try to bring... Um, enough of a teaser that it's not necessarily the most famous thing from the show, but something that's going to wet your whistle and really excite you to come. Mm -hmm. So Ciara is a senior at Fitchburg High. This is her fourth, third, third show. Yeah, we missed one. That's okay. Um, <laughs> and uh, so Ciara can tell you anything that you want to know about the show so that I don't have to do the talking for you. <laughs> yeah? I will. Yes. Yeah, so have, have a, a seat. Little, yeah. Have a seat. Yeah. Oh, and okay. give them a little, like, you know, All right. synopsis, go for it. Okay, hello. 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 Um, so State Fair is about a family of four, they're the Frake family, and they take a trip to the Iowa State Fair, and at the fair, they experience a variety of things. They enter a pig contest, a mincemeat contest, and some of the siblings find their way into the hearts of other people, and it's a great experience and a great family fun show, so everyone should come see it. Thank you. Yeah. So get the times again. What times? So the dates, it's the times. April 11th and 12th, and the curtain opens at 7. And then on the 13th, the curtains open at 2 and 7 p.m. Yeah, 7.30. 7.30. 2 and 7.30, right? Wow. So if you go to the poetry, the open mic night, yep. you can still come and see the show. You'll just wow. miss opening night. That's all. So, yeah. So come there see the show. Can you repeat the times again? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. I'll let you do it. Okay. So April 11th and 12th, curtain opens at 7. And then on April 13th, curtain opens at 2 and 7.30. Okay. Okay. We have some so. incredible cameos, too. Yeah, we do. Some really incredible <laughs> cameos this year, right? One being um, our superintendent will be coming. Yay. All right. For sure. And um, we have... 
Lots of faculty members who are involved in making cameo uh, appearances. That's all I'm going to give you. <laughs> <laughs> and Sierra has also been doing some uh, pre-production work in anticipation of the show. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we've been <laughs> doing a lot of work. We've She's been, been dubbing and editing, let's just say, right? Yeah. I've been mixing. Mixing. Yes. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, I've also been painting. Okay. But yeah. There's lots to do. So um, we'll, we'll have to have a, a pause and a change of hat. So Ciara's going to sing for you um, one of the songs from the show. This is called You Never Had It So Good. And we'll have a little bit of a pause for a transition where our wonderful accompanist, the best that I know, who also happens to be my delightful mom, is going to change hands, um, come on over here and play. Because this one's a little too hard for me to play. So. <laughs> it's now. <Okay>. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So you are you taking notes now? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna write the text. I said I I do a um a review. Are you ready? Yeah, I was born ready. Nice. <laughs> good it's getting into character now. <laughs> no, no, it's good. I just there's a trick to keeping this from sliding. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, you never had it so good For once in your life you're living Show your baby you're grateful For all your baby is giving You've never had it so good, you crazy, attractive mug, you. <laughs> Show your baby you're grateful, or baby's going to slug you. I'll so <laughs> I'll bake, I'll try to make your evenings all enchanted. My honey cake, I'm yours to take, but don't take me for granted. Just do what anyone would Confess you're a lucky feller Come to baby and tell her You've been misunderstood Kiss your baby and tell her You've never had it so good, so good <laughs> Thank you <laughs> Good. Tabitha, just one quick question on sure. uh, could you any more on the VIP program and how it's going? What would you like to know? <laughs> Maybe for you could explain what the VIP program is. Oh, I have a seat. Mm -hmm. You're really good at like putting me on the spot. Yes. <laughs> aren't you? Um, yeah, so this year uh, with the support of our administrators in the building and uh, Bob Jeremy at the high school and the two middle school principals, um, both at Memorial and Longshow, we launched a VIP band program. So any student that is in grade six, seventh, or eighth is able to come to FHS for rehearsals during the school day. So when we have band at the high school first thing in the morning, then these um, group of students, they all come to the high school and they have rehearsal with us in the building um, first thing in the morning. And then they're bused back to both Longshow and oh. Memorial. It's right now we have about 30 kids. So in grades six, seven, and eight, that's 30 grade, 30 students from both schools combined um, are attending. In percentage, that's like 70% of the kids who are um, in seventh and eighth grade at Longjoe are coming, and 30% of the kids from Memorial uh, in seventh and eighth grade are attending. Um, I don't have the total numbers for all the nope. kids that are in sixth yeah. grade, but it's, um, it's nice. It's good. So we're going to be planning. We've just done our seventh rehearsal. And we'll have four more before we all, as an all-district honor band, travel to Music in the Parks. And um, we'll participate in the music festival there at um, Six Flags New England. And that'll be the week after April vacation, so on Friday, April 26th, we'll be going. 
I'm yeah. hoping that's going to carry over, maybe to in, including them in our marching band. Yeah, absolutely. You know, every year it's game, so, every year it's yeah. been possible. So this year with the VIP program, we're hoping that students will continue to join with us for all of our other performances that we have in the month of May and June. Um, well, this year May uh, for graduation. So the the plan will be that the, they will perform at our spring concert. We'll have part of the concert set aside for this honor band and then we will also have um performances they'll join us for the um relays the all district relays where the band has been playing the last seven years at least as long as i've been here at the high school they've been playing there and then um at graduation we've mm -hmm. encouraged them to come and of course those same students would be eligible to join us in the fall as are any seventh and eighth graders and i hope that we might be able to have students from mckay join us because their band program has been very very new in the last two years um and a lot of their sixth graders were just a little too um weren't quite ready to make that big leap um as the other schools were so yeah there you go. Any other questions? Yeah. When is the spring concert? So our concert, of course, <laughs> is May. I think it's the seventh. It might be the ninth. No. It's the eleventh. Okay, Ciara says it's the eleventh. She's probably right. So that's a Saturday. No, it's a Thursday night. So it is the ninth. It was the ninth. See, okay. Ninth. She'll be there. I mean, I don't have to worry about <laughs> I didn't it. So put our, you on the spot yeah. tonight, I know, it. right? I'm like all these dates. So our spring concert is May 9th. So that means that the talent show is May 7th, and then the scholars bank will, will be May 8th, and then the relays are the following week, May 16th. Yep. I think it was Jean you brought up uniforms. You know, that's something we need to stay on top of. Talk about. Yes. So there's um, kind of discussions that are happening in terms of how best to to uh, request um, funding for that it's the one group that has not made the transition to the cardinal red um, color that all the other teams have made mm. um, that is true all right yeah so well, I think that's one getting you know figures and well, I'm, uh, yeah and so that. that's that's what I'm kind of, we're in the process yeah. of, of doing and figuring out because the budget is being built at the moment so you know I like I'm this is the time to, to yep, get so it I'm, done I'm, so we can I'm, look at it you know precisely so we're in the the stages of receiving um, quotes from different from Stanbury uniforms mm -hmm. um, to give us a quotation for the amount per uniform how are we yeah. doing on uh, instruments are we okay uh, we are in need of some probably some new stands and probably some new instruments depending on how many students um, are making the transition because the uh, it is becoming more and more likely that students that once they arrive at Fitchburg High School that they do not own their own instrument and so the school needs to supply it for them um, but yes these are things that we can you know because you, know, you know we buy a lot of computers and uh, things like that so mm -hmm. we we need to that's another part of what we need to do is provide the instruments for our students so um, you know get numbers and so forth so that it can be all factored in yes absolutely okay we had a band parents meeting um, what, like a month ago mm -hmm. or something? Uh, and that's a good sign that there are parents I guess I think you have just kind of soldiered on without any mm -hmm. um, I mean obviously obviously Rick Kazanjan and Dennis Cucciera are still involved they mm -hmm. are so vital to it um but the i think when we had that meeting it just becomes very apparent that anything you want to happen it kind of falls back on um tabitha and um and it's hard because like you're out, you're the one doing the plays and the musical and the, <laughs> and the concert so it's a lot like slamming um right in this one season mm -hmm. so i mean i think we've hope that we can I know we have some we assigned some um, research mm -hmm. or parents to to do mm -hmm. I know there was a question about um, the gator like uh, any kind of vehicle all right, to, right. Yeah, gator vehicle. I I yeah Tom yeah up. we started that, looking email into that yeah <laughs> come back to it yeah, yeah so yeah. that's the problem with the parents we're not always <laughs> 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 we're not always like no the the parents yeah. are always wonderful anytime that I ever need help um, and I ask for it it is always freely given um, and I'm very grateful, you know, for parents like Jean that are super supportive of our program. 
Do you plan on mentioning any of your interactive ideas at the State Fair? Or you're not letting that out of the bag? <laughs> oh, sure. So, no, this is actually really exciting. So, um, as you know, the Fitchburg Farmers Market meets on Thursday nights. And so as part of a kind of fully immersive experience of coming to State Fair, mm -hmm. the Fitchburg Farmers Market has just relocated its... Um, you know, kind of experience to be at our opening night. So when you come to State Fair, you can also shop at the Fitchburg Farmer's Market. So it should feel like you are coming to a State Fair at Fitchburg High School. We'll have games set up in the the foyer um, for people to play. We're also gonna have a, a pie judging contest on I'll Thursday, volunteer. I mean, Friday night, Friday <laughs> night, yeah. Um, Did you hear that? Is that he, oh, to they, judge? To judge, oh, they oh, try no. the pie. No, no, so I'm going to make a pie. No, oh, I, I make a great apple there pie. You go. Um, okay, I'm going to hold you to that. I expect yeah. two pies for two Friday Two pies, night. I can do that. Two apple pies, okay. <laughs> so it'll be a blind judging, you know, everyone can kind of put in a, a donation, but it'll be included in your ticket price as long as the pies last, and um, whoever wins will receive of a blue ribbon all right so all right. there you wow. go <laughs> yeah Can, uh, question Any? what prompted you to choose state fair because <laughs> it, it's a um it, it's a wonderfully um it's complicated yeah. it's traditional it's really american yes but, and it, what i've noticed over the past years with um ms greenlee's is that the musicals are they're really sophisticated mm -hmm. They're really complicated and challenging. And let me ask the students, do you feel challenged in this musical? I, yeah, definitely. I'm, <laughs> I'm stepping out of my comfort zone the most I probably have in any of the shows that I've done. I'm, I'm playing a character that's very complex, so it's a lot of learning different ways of interaction, especially with the same person, which makes it really difficult. Okay. Yeah, but what, what what prompted you to choose this show? Because I'm always I love every choice you make, and they're always different from your. Yes, year. so um, I I take my my process really seriously. I think mm -hmm. in terms of choosing the show for the next year, and I see it first as an educational opportunity. You know, <coughs> not only is my job to pick shows that are going to get students engaged, but also to have them uh, learn about the craft of musical theater and for the community and student body at large to learn about the craft of musical theater so we've done productions which are a little bit more modern we've yeah. done shows that are with well within the canon we've done show like this state fair is absolutely a rogers and hammerstein show um so well within the canon but also slightly diverse because it is not it's the only musical that rogers and hammerstein wrote for film as opposed to for the stage um, most people are more familiar with oklahoma or the sound of music uh king and i but um, that duo is um, one of the most iconic in the history of um, kind of modern American musical theater. Um, so yeah, I try to pick things that are going to be engaging and stretch uh, the students and have different opportunities for performance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Michael, you look like you want to say something over there. Sure. <laughs> we, can, we can put them, we can absolutely. like three different types of dance. I yeah. am, I am <laughs> happy, happy to put both of them on the spot. So Rocco Archipredi came as a, a great um, cheerleader uh, for, yeah. <laughs> for Ciara. Um, but the two of them would be, would happily speak, I think. Yeah. I'm putting you on the spot. Come okay. on over. Mm. Grab a chair. Yeah. What have you learned about Iowa? <laughs> what have we learned about Iowa? Well, we we do know that if all of us were to just get in our cars and drive for 20 hours, that each and every one of us could attend the Iowa State Fair this oh. summer. <laughs> and there's been there's been lots of conversations to actually do that. So I don't know how many of them are, are really gonna. We've talked about it. There's a group <laughs> really? chat on right now. We're trying to figure out who's gonna drive the farthest. Yeah. But there's talked about it. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, why not? I know. Why not? So, yes, it is very, uh, very American, very patriotic, but um, I, I think that at its heart, it's the story of people and their development and how they kind of grow as individuals and the experiences they, that they have that help to shape their development mm -hmm. by kind of getting themselves out of their comfort zone. And that's 
typical a typical need of a teenager, <laughs> I think. Yeah. How many students are involved with the play? So there are 20 in the cast, okay. um, and there will be a few more that will help with our um, technical side of things. So there'll be 20 on stage. Um, yeah, and I have a stellar amount of, of um, helpers that, that do stage crew. And the, I, I've gone in a direction, um, because I like, I like Penn and Teller, like magicians. I like that when they tell you how the action is going to happen, it doesn't make the, the magic any less enjoyable when they tell you how the trick is going to happen. So a lot of our shows recently have involved the cast uh, interacting with the set and being responsible for those scene changes. Uh, it creates a different kind of atmosphere when you're watching it. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, they're very responsible, the kids that I do have. I can't speak highly enough about them. And there's a lot of upperclassmen, so I'm in the process of finding replacements, which yeah. is sad. Mm. Yeah. There's a lot of first time seniors as well. Yeah. Yes, yes, like some rook outs, you know, that's their first show and it'll also be their <laughs> oh. their last show. Is that you, Rocco? Yeah, yeah. Rocco's a rook <laughs> out. Um, I brought a lot of them. Yeah, there's a lot, Zach. Uh, I, we, we don't need to name all these kids that you don't know that aren't sitting here. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's not do that. <laughs> You've got a recruit behind you. She's very interested. Yeah. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Mr. By just a year for uh, Wonka last. Year. I know. Yep. But very good. Yeah. 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 Thank we'll you. It will brother. be great. So please, yep. please do come. But again, we won't be disappointed if you miss opening night because you're attending the um, Red Poet Society. Normally, I don't like cross uh, <laughs> 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 cross promote, but I think that yeah. that's. I'm I'm sad that I can't attend. Yeah. Um, to, to attend this event uh, that make makes put together. So yeah, yeah. Thank you. Ta -da. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank Here you. we go. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Tabitha. Thank you. See you later. Yeah. See you later. Oh, this I totally took the chance. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Budget items. Okay, we have a couple donations uh, that are action items to be accepted by the school committee. First is $1,000 from uh, Jim Laxo uh, to support the robotics programming, in particular the VEX robotics team. Uh, we, we have another um, donation of uh, $465 uh, from Foxwoods Casino to help with math activities for parents of wow. students in grades K through 8. That's it for donations. Um, so funny. <laughs> we have uh, one grant to submit. Um, we are applying for uh, a Safer Schools and Communities grant, which was just announced recently last week. Um, we'll be applying for $80,000 for um, doors at Crocker and Longs Joe. This uh, request will supplement some city funds that were. Uh, previously approved for that uh, to cover the full costs uh, of the project and the priority under this grant is for external doors and locks, locking systems which um, are the need at Long Show and Crocker. Um, so that's the grant that we plan to submit on Wednesday. Uh, then grants to accept. First is the uh, 542 Summer School Food Grant for $9,329 to help uh, participating participation across the district. And then the second uh, grant to accept is really, uh, really came about as a little bit of a surprise. Uh, this is this year's, this school year's relief uh, funding for students displaced by the hurricanes in Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. And the total amount to be received this fiscal year is $572,000. Um, and again, that was based on our qualifying enrollment uh, as of last year, and uh, it helps uh, support some of the costs in educating the students who have been displaced here. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, great news to find out last week. Uh, as far as school choice tonight, on your agenda, we have uh, one request uh, along the lines of security. Uh, the police department had previously been approved for a $50,000 Department of Justice grant to have a third party firm perform an independent security assessment of our schools. Uh, bids have gone out and the, uh, the amount of the grant is, is not uh, adequate to cover the full costs 
of that study. Uh, so the police department has asked and the resource subcommittee uh, approved uh, additional funding or funding from school choice of $12,978 uh, so that assessment can be completed. And then once that assessment is completed, uh, that will um, help educate the police department in terms of how to invest some funds received under another grant uh, in terms of whether it be physical, physical security, uh, door locking, uh, or any video type surveillance uh, equipment. Okay. Okay. Before we go to the next item, Speaker, yep. if I could, I have a couple quick questions about yep. that. So does the police department give out the bids? The, the, not us. The police department is responsible for the grant writing process. and they, The police department wrote this grant, right. yes. Okay. We so are just the beneficiary. And they got bids back from different third-party organizations to well, do Oh, through the purchasing, city purchasing department. They went through them to get the, the bids. Okay. So, yes. So when they got given the grant for $50,000 and they could get multiple bids to do the assessment, was there different price ranges? So one under $50,000 that they, you know, do, do we have any yeah. kind of insight on the choice of how? I, I, I don't know if there were any under 50,000. Uh, right. You know, they, they are the experts in terms of vetting the, um, these firms who specialize in school security. So um, I'm really relying on, um, you know, the police department um, working with city procurement okay. uh, to really find the best firm uh, that's also available too at this time. Yeah, so. but I don't know. You, yeah. you see where I'm coming from? Yeah. Right? No. Yeah. It's extra grant money. I mean, that's always kind of a, a downer to see that, you know, especially if we're going to get free money, we have to spend extra money to get it. Well, in a, I don't know in if, a way. You yeah, know? yeah. Like if it yeah. was avoidable to say there was multiple bids, what kind of yeah? Well, there were it, yeah there to make sure they're staying it, within it budget. Did, it did go out to bid, um, and I think the um, I mean just the bids came, the bids did come over what they had originally applied for under the grant. So we didn't right. have the bids before the grant was written. Right. Right. All right. That's all. Thanks. Okay. I just want to make one comment on. Uh, Jimmy Loxo. Jimmy Loxo yep. is a, a graduate of Fitchburg High School. Uh, he has donated to us in the past. Yep. Uh, and the Loxo family in Fitchburg, they have been very supportive, even though uh, they, some of the students have moved, children have moved away, they are still supportive of uh, Fitchburg High School and the Fitchburg schools, along with uh, Lenny Loxo, who is the commissioner of Public Works in Fitchburg was very supportive of the Fitchburg Public Schools. Policy items? So tonight we have the uh, second reading of two policy items. One, the school entrance age policy, uh, 5101, uh, and the second policy is the school student attendance policy. I don't know, Sally, if there's anything you want to add? Um, nope, just this is what we saw last week, and uh, we included the um, pre-K and kindergarten on page two of st uh, student attendance, um, school entrance age uh, policy. Um, again, we discussed this last time, so this is just awaiting, awaiting a vote. Any questions? Well, it looked like you said on this that it, that it didn't necessarily apply to pre-K and kindergarten. So that's why I read it, and I, I said, and I figured that reflected the changes that we yeah, talked about. Yeah, she put the, yeah, yep. we talked, uh, so put the K, yeah. K in there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now we're and, all and unanimous on it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And I should say a, a big thank you to Patty Pickers, big Pickers because she, um, the administrative um, uh, wizard at Central Office, who help, helps keep us on target and on track with all of this. Um, policy is this critical piece of what we do and the precision that Patty brings to her collaborations with our subcommittee can, cannot be, you know, overpraised. So thank you, Patty. Policy is really the job of the school committee. Mm -hmm. That is our job. Oh, yeah. That's our main job, setting policy. And so the policy committee, that is so important. And uh, people have done a good job uh, doing it. So thank you. A lot of work to do. Yep. Yep. Uh, could I have a motion to bundle 191131 through 191138? Motion made. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, 
Executive session, none. Uh, do you have to vote on the bundle now? Oh, That's what oh I was just okay. About to say. Yeah. I always yeah. get confused. Yeah, yeah I know it. Yeah, we, <laughs> did, like, we voted on bundle. Put them all together we, and then. Do we have a, a vote uh, on the motion? <laughs> motion to approve the bundle. Yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, no need for an executive session. Motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good job tonight. Thank you. Thank you. So I just need